Hi there everyone, my name's Chris, welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at the M&P9 full size, new release from VFC. Luckily I've uh, got one here in this package, so I'm going to crack into this and uh, let's see what we've got. So we've got a fairly standard uh, round box, but packaging wise on the front the actual pictures of the M&P9C compact version. Um, VFC actually released that quite a long time ago now. And uh, quite a lot of people have been waiting a while for the for the full size version. So uh, inside instructions is a uh, this this one says European countries. So obviously you'll have one appropriate to your region. Packaging got that's the one of the extra back straps. Obviously one of the features of the M and is you can switch out the back straps, and that's something. BFC have emulated. That's the larger one by the looks of it. That's the medium. I'm going to presume the guns are a bit of a small. Got a serial number plate and a piece for fitting into the magazine so that you can fire it without BBs. And then of course the pistol itself. Plenty of bubble wrap in the box, so it should arrive to a decent state. Obviously, first things first, I know a lot of Guys are going to be watching this over the pond, so drop the mag. Clear. Yeah. A lot of the problem with the Stark, which is VSC Glocks, the recoil spring tends to be a bit weak. So, uh, as you can see there, I've just released the slider, it works that time, it's a bit inconsistent. Um, you probably just stretch it out to fix that fall. Uh, you know, there'll definitely be stronger recoil springs. Um, features wise, as far as I know, the 9C was pretty much bang on the real thing. So um, let's, let's have a look. We've got our slide release on the side near me. Quite easy to knock by the looks of things. And we've got it there as well. So that's ambidextrous. Magazine catch just here. Being a striker fired gun is pretty simple. It's, there's no external safety. The real thing's an awful lot, like a Glock. And this replica will probably be the same in that it'll be similar to other airsoft locks. No external safety. You can actually, there's actually a marking just here uh, and the, the pivot mount where the external safety can go on the. Uh, obviously, there's a model of the real MP that can feature that. Takedown wise, we just lock it to the rear. Got your pivot lever here, it's kind of like a SIG. Rotate that out of the way, let it go slowly forward. The slide off the frame, nice and easy. Then, much like a Glock, recoil rod and spring, captive spring on there. Barrel. Metal outer barrel. Obviously, that contains your hop unit and the inner barrel. And then Looks like some quite decent machining. The, the actual slide seems to be pretty well done. Reassembly, just the opposite. Super simple. Barrel goes in. Recoil rod and spring. Make sure you mount it in the right place because you can get it wrong, like I almost did there. Back onto the frame. fiddle but eventually that lever will rotate back into place. Trigger functions the same as a real thing. If I try and pull the uh, very upper part of it up here, I'm not going to get anything. But this, uh, this lower section is articulated onto the main portion of the trigger. Press that, it goes off. The trigger pull itself is, let's have a go. Say it feels somewhat longer than a Glock, but there is a, there's a definite wall. You hit that, click, and then if we hold it to the rear, slide and cycle. There's no audible click when you move it forward. I'm not sure if that's a feature on the real thing. I've actually checked, but 
turn it forward slightly to reset. Five again. No audible click. There we go. Uh, it's pretty solid. Doesn't feel mushy or fudgy always some sort of triggers can, especially on airsoft pistols. One basic thing obviously as with a real pistol, barrel and slide are metal, frame, plastic. As I showed in the package, uh, you've got those extra back straps, there's a comes with one fitted and you can, depending on your hand size, you could swap out this back strap and that will change this swell at the rear of the frame and it will also change the uh, upper tang on the rear of the frame where the where your hand will sit. Just change the shape of it. If you've got a larger hand you'll want the larger back strap to change that, it's really easy. You twist this portion at the back at the very base, that comes out. I believe on the real thing that is the takedown tool I know on a Glock. Uh, it's a tool you buy separate and you just pop out the pins. I'm not sure yet if that's any use on the airsoft model but we'll see. A little tool there could come in handy for something. And as your back strap removed, you can swap out whichever one you felt like. Uh, I'm guessing this is the smallest type, and I've got a small little girl hand, so I'm going to put the small straight back in. Place that tool there, twist, and that is your back strap back into place. Not much of a flare on the magwell, it's fairly straight. What I do like is the texturing on the front of the frame here. It actually continues up all the way up to this point. So it continues partially onto the trigger guard, so it's going to mesh with that part of the middle finger when you're firing. Get a good grip. Fitment between the slide and the frame. A little bit of wobble. You can definitely see a lot of daylight through there, but from what I recall, that's fairly actually close to the real thing when I was there. Uh, in the States uh, last year. Um, you can see the, the videos of the shooting courses I took there back on my channel. And I have a browse in there, the pistol I carried, the uh, Falcon Ops AR manipulation classes. It was an MMP, it was a long slide. This is obviously the standard full size. There's some fairly visible mold lines, particularly on the actual tang of the frame. There's one that follows down here. It's you can only just about feel it, it's particularly with a gloved hand on, you cannot feel it on the web of your hand at all. But, just something to be aware of. Top of the slide's nice and smooth, no actual... The metal part seemed to be done a lot better than the plastic, from what I can see. It was actually, when, um, when I first pulled it out of the box, there was a little bit of flash just inside here, behind the trigger. That's just, just fallen off now. Uh, so, yeah, again, mold line inside the trigger guard where they actually made the uh, gun in the mold that's, that's, I'm guessing it's a two-piece mold. Trademarks wise, now you'll see this sold as the Cybergun M&P. Cybergun are just a licensing company, they don't manufacture anything. The OEM for this is VFC. But they've got the Cybergun for the licensing, so every trademark on here uh, emulates the real thing. The only difference is, well let's move, let's move a bit closer to the camera. Just here, got made in Taiwan instead of, uh, I'm not sure what it would be in the real thing, that serial number plate I showed before can be placed in there at which point there will be no visible trademarks to say airsoft or, or anything like that on them. On, uh, got your caution here, the gun can be fired without a magazine fitted, obviously weapons like the Browning High Power you must have a magazine fitted to engage, uh, actually enable the trigger to function. Got some pretty nicely engraved Smith & Wesson trademarks on that side and then m and 9 Smith & Wesson again all their markings down that side of the frame Sights Got the, uh, sort of a Novak style to it almost on the rear sight you'll notice they're actually playing black at the moment in that little package I showed before which has the the serial number plate, there's some white plastic insert, so you won't have night sights, but you'll have at least three dot white sights instead of these uh, entirely plain black ones as they are right now. Picatinny rail, attaching uh, sort of like an X300 TLR1 Inforce APL, that's the sort of, sort of light you're going to want on one of these. You can see there what on the real thing would be 
sort of a not a loaded chain but indicator necessarily but a uh, a window that enables you to see if there is a round loaded on this gun that isn't going to do anything because uh, you can't you can't see straight into the hop unit so you're not going to be able to see a BB. Slice serrations wise got these wavy cuts as with the real thing and I have to say I really like them you get a really good purchase on them and due to that slightly weaker recoil spring you're going to want to make sure every time you rack the gun you do it good and firm if you if you're weak with it you get that so make sure it bounces all the way back off the stop in the frame uh, that will make sure you always return to battery every time if you if you are a bit weak with it or it just fucks you around for whatever reason just forward assist the same way as you would do with a uh, if you're doing a press check front sight is a little loose i've noticed a little bit of a bit of play there hopefully that that will show. It won't actually, I can't take it out, I'm getting, it's fixed in, but it does wobble around a little bit. It's a bit of a tolerance issue. Um, it's not going to fall out on you or anything, so uh, I think at airsoft ranges that you're using the pistol is probably not going to be too much of an issue. See so your uh, barrel profile there widens at the end, and then silver chrome finish on the recoil spring guide, as with the real MP. Oh, there's a sl slide release problem again. Okay, so here's our magazine. Got some fairly pointless markings down the side, but if you want your, your stuff to look as real as possible, I suppose that's nice. Just to show the number of rounds if it was actually firing 9mm instead of 6mm. The base plate has appropriate Smith & Wesson markings. There's your gas fill valve. Just load your BBs like so, hold this spring down. Not much to say about the magazine particularly. I mean, never really is. Obviously, fit it, it, you've got to, I find you have to move, personally anyway, I, if I try and press the mag release like that, I can just about, just get get it to release, but if, I'm in, if I was in a full firing grip, then I'm probably, I can't really reach the mag release with my small hands, it might be different for other people, but for me, I'm going to have to adjust my grip press it and then it doesn't always necessarily drop free either so um, if you when you do want to get the mag out you're going to want to rotate the gun slightly get a full press and yeah, oh there we go it's mm, you know that'll change with wear in and as it as it gets used a bit obviously an empty mag locks the slide to the rear okay so in terms of weight got the scales here Set to grams and the pistol itself, 411, which is uh, 14 and a half ounces. Now, a loaded magazine, that's 25 BBs and the gas, 249 grams, which is a uh, 8.8 .8 ounces, so combined and the actual gun loaded that's 660 grams or one point or oh, well, one pound 7.3 ounces. An empty magazine by comparison, so the, the full mag again that was a 249 and an empty one. Just a ton of bit of gas, pretty much what you'd expect, a few grams lighter. Now the, the manufacturer's quote the magazines is holding 24, I've managed to squeeze in 25, but I'd stick to about, probably around 20. You could load these to the capacity of the real ones quite happily, that would mean you'll, uh, you'll pretty much always get slide lock, even with quite rapid firing. So let's put this uh, Smith & Wesson m and from VFC through the uh, chrono and see how it's shooting. First things first, of course, always have your safety specs, even if all you're doing is a chrono, because you never know when you might get a ricochet. So we've got our loaded magazine here, 0.2 gram BBs, filled it up with green gas. Chrono set to feet per second.
slides lock back, averaging around the sort of 250 kind of area, FPS wise. So I've field stripped the pistol. Um, so I'm not going to do an accuracy test right now because the hop rubber is slightly misaligned and it would make it pointless. I'll need to take the hop unit apart. I'll do another video later down the line if um, when the opportunity arises and we'll look a bit more at the accuracy and range, that sort of thing. So for now, we'll just fire a couple of mags through it, see what happens. Slides not pop back on that one. Run a bit short of gas. It is fairly cold out. Um, I would say freezing, it's not that cold. Not massively efficient so far, but then there is a distinct lack of uh, oil actually on the, uh, on the frame rails as it stands. So I think efficiency wise, a lot could potentially be changed by uh, getting some maintenance. Something I've noticed the field strips a little fiddly. Probably their self tolerance. There we go. I, the cost on this before shipping, etc., from WGC was 135. Spare mag was around 30. So, yeah, uh, reduction wise, they're never going to be outstanding, but functionally, it certainly mirrors the. The real MMP pretty well. The trademarks are very nice, that's certainly a plus point. Um, operation, if it weren't for that recoil spring, I think it would operate quite smoothly. The slide on the frame isn't too bad at all. Uh, the trigger's okay. Um, is, do you like it? Uh, shame about the mold lines. Uh, we'll see some uh, QA, QC issues with the factory there with the hop unit. Uh, I will look at that, I will take that apart, readjust the hop rubber. Um, realistically, for I'm shooting at about seven yards just here, hitting a, a head sized target, no problem. One thing I did find impressive was that the inner barrel uh, does have a rubber o ring. It, it, well, the, the barrel itself has a groove cut right at the very end of it and there's an o-ring just sat just about there which means that where the inner barrel is inside the outer it's not rattling around which can uh, really affect your accuracy so um, barrel itself just brass probably going to be standard bore 6.08 uh, no feeding issues with that shooting there so far or with any of the chronoing some good points some bad uh, you know it's obviously the very first version of this gun they're going to improve it this is an early adopter, this is always a risk you take, but it certainly works. That is you know, one of the main things. And overall, not too bad, not too bad. Uh, a Tokyo Marui uh, would cost a fair bit more and lacks obviously any metal, any major metal components would be all plastic. So uh, a nicely, you know, officially licensed full metal slide, metal out of barrel, full authentic trademarks for a 135. Um, you know, I think it's very good. Uh, as a training pistol for short ranges, yep. Uh, skirmishing short ranges for, for the airsofters, yep. Uh, shouldn't have any problems. I think the M&P is, uh, you know, especially with the WE version being the only other one currently available, um, for the FC coming out with this is definitely, uh, you know, it's a good thing. Uh, it's nice to see it on the market. And I think even though there's there's some small QC uh, issues with this particular gun, you know, it, that's going to vary from between each pistol, even from the same manufacturer. And I think QC-wise, 
VFC are going to do better than WE. That, that would be my estimation anyway. Certainly from the WE pistols I've seen, their MMP line has a, a pretty bad reputation overall for just um, firing you know, without even pulling the trigger and all these other things. Which reminds me actually, if you lock the slide to the rear on this model, what you'll note just here, it's a little, it just looks like an internal part, but that little piece just inside there, rear slide with the groove cut out, is actually a fire selector so you can switch it to auto. I've not bothered to show that in this because it's not a feature the real thing has, firing automatic. I'd have preferred this to be semi-auto only. I'm not entirely sure why they put that in, but it's in the VFC uh, MP9 compact. So they've obviously, to produce this version, they've just you know made the frame and slide that bit larger. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, appreciate your viewership. Appreciate all the thumbs up and the subscribers, all that sort of stuff. If you, you want to keep up with the uh, progress on this pistol, any f future videos, any pictures I'll put up, and there will be some, be some. just uh, check out the Facebook page uh, in the description box below. Uh, plenty of content going up there all the time. And uh, again guys, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.